we're going to be taking our portable sawmill to our friend's house a few hours away. And to do that, we're gonna be loading it onto our equipment trailer. But the challenge is how we get it onto the trailer. Our plan is to bring this, the equipment trailer down and then back this portable sawmill onto that trailer. But why are we loading onto the trailer in the first place? Our sawmill has wheels, why don't we just tow it there directly? Well, there's two main reasons for that. First is that yes, it is on a trailer, but really we got this trailer so that we can just move it around our property. We didn't really get it to go on the roads. While you can register this as a road legal trailer, we have not done that. It does not have a license plate, so we can't tow this on the public roads. Second, it's got really small wheels and it's really designed for kind of shorter distance traveling, lower speeds, not for driving several hours down the interstate. For that, we want to use our equipment trailer, which is much bigger, much stronger, it's 20 foot long and allows us to carry this in a much sturdier way. That trailer obviously is registered for going on the road. So that's why we want to load it onto the equipment trailer. The challenge is how to do it. Now to get it on the trailer at this end, we have a tractor, that would be nice and easy. We could just back it on with a tractor and we'd be fine. But at the other end, our friends don't have a tractor. And so that even if we can get it off the trailer without the tractor at that end, we need to be able to get it back on as well. So to make sure we can, we're gonna load it up today without using the tractor to actually get it onto the trailer. We do need to use the tractor to maneuver it out of the spot where we've tucked it in here. But once we've got it out, we're gonna try and do this using just the truck and see if we can get our portable sawmill on the equipment trailer. We tucked the sawmill here a couple of months ago using the tractor. So the tractor is the only thing that can back in there. So we have put the ballast box on the tractor with a hitch receiver. So now Matt's gonna maneuver to get in there to get it out of there. The hitch is on that end. You need to make sure you can get the truck in there. Yeah, as long as I can get through there, the truck is good. Yeah. I know we're only going just down the road, but it's a steep driveway. Oh, oh. Just down the driveway. It's okay. a steep driveway, so. Might as well get all these connected and also make sure they'll work as well. Okay, so we've got the receiver pin is through and the receiver's there. The coupler latch is down, that's locked in place and the uh, pin is through. Safety chains are on, emergency brake cables on, electrical cables on, tongue jack is up. So now we are clear to remove the chocks from in front of the wheels. The challenge we're gonna run into getting this up here is the ramp at the bottom mm. here, or the, the back of the equipment trailer, isn't that low. So it is dropped at the back, the back couple of feet are dropped, but also the back of the sawmill is pretty low. And I don't think the wheels on the sawmill will hit the ramps, maybe just before mm. the back of the sawmill gets here. So we're gonna try and prop up the tongue jack on the equipment trailer as much as we can. And hopefully that'll just tip this back just a little bit more. I need to release the truck anyway, because we're gonna pull that back around to, uh, to move the sawmill. So let's give this a go. Otherwise we may have to find a way just to raise the sawmill up a little bit before it hits the ramps. Okay, so the trailer's well chopped there. We've tested that by pulling against it with a truck. So now I'm gonna raise the if this moves, just be prepared to get out of the way. Yeah. Shouldn't. Always good to be careful. We are on a slope. I may just need to back the truck up a little bit just to free it from there. I feel like I'm lifting the truck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's the next chance that we're going to be able to get the back down. Uh, that's a good point. Let's see if we can put the ramps down now. This trailer has ramps that have this uh, support on the bottom so that on flat ground normally when you put the ramp down 
the weight of the vehicle on the ramps doesn't press the back of the trailer down, lifting up the front of the trailer and lifting up the tow vehicle, which is great. In this situation, we're not on flat ground and we actually don't want the height of the ramps if we can avoid it. So I think what we're gonna do is take the ramps off entirely. That'll lower the back of the trailer to just three or four inches off the ground, which is probably low enough that we can just back the sawmill straight up onto it. If not, we can throw these bars back in, put some two by sixes on there and go up those as makeshift ramps, but we might get away with just going straight onto it. So time to remove the ramps. So Matt is raising the front to lower the back as much as possible. How much further? A few inches. And yeah, yep. touching. Now Matt needs to go and turn around. Okay, so sawmill is attached. Now we need to get it on the trailer. Okay, let's keep same line, straight, back. Okay, stop. Okay, good, we're on. Yeah, looking good. We made it. We got the sawmill onto the equipment trailer and honestly, no issues. As we expected, we did use the two by sixes as little ramps just to help wheel the sawmill up onto the trailer. It did clear the deck at the back, which we were a little concerned about. Once we got on there, we tried to make sure it was really centered. That way the weight balance left to right is really good. We've lowered the front pretty much as low as it will go, again, to keep the weight nice and low. Most of the weight on the sawmill is the saw head, and that's going to be near the front of the equipment trailer, which will make it more stable when towing. Overall, the sawmill only weighs about 1,700 pounds, so it's not super heavy. We have used every ratchet strap we own, pretty much, to secure the thing. We did put a chain at the front. We don't have any other chain tensioners, so instead we put it on the front and then just pulled forward just ever so slightly with the truck to tension that chain, locked it in place at the front with some ratchet straps. So really, the ratchet straps are doing the, the heavy lifting here. They're holding the weight but there is that chain just as a backup in case. On the back, we then tied up the, the ramps with some more tie downs. They tend to rattle a bit. And since it's a long journey, I don't want to listen to the chains rattling or the ramps rattling for three hours on the road. So we just threw a couple of tie downs on there to hold those nice and secure. And then finally, we put a flag, an orange flag uh, on the hitch of the sawmill. So the sawmill is sticking out the back about two feet or so. So we put that flag on there just to make sure that anyone behind us can see that there is something sticking out of the back of the trailer. So this is the setup. We can now hook the truck back onto the front of the equipment trailer, get that ready to go tomorrow. The sawmill is just ever so slightly longer than the equipment trailer. So it does stick out the back and also it's just hanging over the tongue of the equipment trailer, just ever so slightly. We did make sure it wasn't sticking forward so much that it impaired our use of the jack or that it was gonna compromise the turning radius of the equipment trailer. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this. It should be a nice sturdy setup for the journey tomorrow. Our journey down to our friend's house with the sawmill went really well. The sawmill was rock solid on the back of the equipment trailer. And honestly, the approach worked really, really well. We got down there, we had it unloaded, no issue. In the end, we were able to use our friend's truck and pull it off that way, which actually made the whole process a lot easier, but we were ready to do it on our own with just our truck if necessary. While we were there, we had a fun weekend with our friends. We milled five or six, I think it was, six really nice logs with them, a couple of oak logs and some pine logs. And it was their first time milling anything and watching their faces as we opened up those logs and we could see for the first time what was inside. That was pretty cool. We managed to get the sawmill loaded back onto the equipment trailer and brought it all the way back here to our property. We've sort of proven, I guess, that we can, if we, if we need to, we can take this sawmill somewhere. 
and I'm really happy with that process. If we did it again, it would be a lot quicker, but the overall process worked really well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.